Necklace number two, uh, the guys behind Bill Guard. And, you know, I, normally I would act like I was an unbiased reporter, but I've already tweeted that I think Bill Guard should win. So, so why pretend that I haven't said that? I was, I was actually looking to have my mind changed in the last panel because I think um, particularly the two Enterprise guys did not do uh, the best presentation yesterday. I don't think they did their company's justice. Yep. And I think they did a better job this time. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I still think you guys are the favorite because so frequently we get companies at Disrupt that are really good for our demographic, yeah. but not across a wide demographic. And yeah. that's sort of the thing that puts it over the top and the fact that you're going through banks as a distribution model. So thank you. Yeah, we also, um, we have the mainstream kind of soccer mom in Idaho in mind, and mm -hmm. not just an early adopter. Um, I don't know how that bodes for a competition like this, mm -hmm. but um, the response from you know kind of very non-web savvy people has been you know almost like emotional. Not yeah. just uh, I need this product. This is like wow. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. Right. I know I am, and right. to have something safeguard me from that is something that kind of touches the very kind of very core right. kind of need. Well, I mean, you're going to actually help save my marriage because I've had a charge on a credit <laughs> That's a card That's a for about eight, eight years, okay. and I've tried to call to get it removed so many times, and they've said they're going to remove it, but okay. they don't. And literally, right before I came, I, oh, I was in Berlin before this, but right before I got on the plane, my husband was like, when you get back, you have, we have spent thousands of dollars over our married life on this charge we can't get yeah, yeah, yeah. resolved. And it's like, I mean, this is exactly what you do. Now, I, what I'm interested to see when I actually use it is how easy is it yeah. to get rid of that charge. That seems to be where the rubber is going to meet the road. For that you know what's though. been one of the most amazing things? Mm -hmm. We find stuff for, for people, and we notice that they still haven't actually gone out and got it removed and gotten in credit. Mm -hmm. Some people are just too lazy to actually call up their bank and do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why the second phase of our product, we actually want to integrate with the banks so we can automate the entire resolution management process. When is process. that second phase coming? Because that, that to is me very much is what makes it we don't even killer be, service. Even before yes. this, we, we, have you seen the comments that we have in the details panel when you click on a transaction? Mm -mm. So you have the ability to ask questions about Okay, now I understand it's a bad charge. How can I get this removed? Mm -hmm. And you can have all the fellow yeah. customers just answer questions. And the one that solved this problem, the one that's, that found, found the loophole to actually get this charge removed, uh -huh. will be able to put out a solution for everybody else. And there are uh -huh. people out and there now, that do that. <laughs> OCDs who call up their bank right. once a month and say, what is this, what is that, and get right. it removed. And, and that work that they're doing. As, as much possible yeah. the ability of the crowd to really, to really help each other um, to the point where we're going to put this information, these questions, outside so that you will be able, anyone else will be able to Google, even if it's not a user of BillGuard, to Google mm -hmm. um, uh, the name of a weird charge. Yeah. Um, and then you'll get to a transaction page from BillGuard telling you exactly An what it is page. Mm -hmm. and what you need to do and what is it bad and how you get it removed. That's interesting. So the big issue with you guys that, that everyone brings up and that I've heard talking to judges backstage and, and other people in the crowd is the business model. Okay. People think, I mean, you heard Fred Wilson arguing right. with you that yeah. it should be free. Yeah. Um, other people think you should charge when you save someone money. Um, on the original judging panel, someone said, you should take 50% because if you're saving me the money, right. you should take even more. So, I mean, I, I really like your stance that you should build a great product and charge for it because I tend to disagree with Fred. I think that making the web too free has sort of been a mistake of the late 90s, and I, I think that entrepreneurs should have the guts to charge. But, I mean, you are getting over and over and over again advice from people yeah. saying there's something off with the way you're charging. Are yeah. you thinking about rethinking it? Or are you sticking are. to what you're doing? First of all, anytime Fred Wilson tells you something uh, that strongly, you listen. And you're, and you're not and just saying that because there's cameras pointed at you. No, you really oh, are, are, we, are we on? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that. Uh, no, I'm a, I just, I'm a great fan of and respect Fred's opinion greatly. Mm -hmm. um, and if he was on my board and he felt that strongly about it, we'd probably change our business model. Mm -hmm. um, we feel uh, <coughs> that it is, especially for a company like ours, who, we're consumer web people. You know, mm -hmm. we do not, we're not banking people who understand how to navigate all of the, uh, mm -hmm. the politics of working with banks and doing business development with banks. It's very important for us to go into those conversations um, with leverage. You don't want to be, yeah. with no money, hoping that somebody acquires you, yeah. or you start advertising to your users based on their spending patterns. We don't want to do any of that. And we don't want to be in a situation with, where, with the banks where we're reliant on them, because at our core, we're all about the consumer, mm -hmm. and we need to build a system that is self-sufficient 
to servicing the consumer. Mm -hmm. Part of that is covering our costs in doing so. Mm -hmm. It could very well be that the kind of growth goes so quickly, the banks are going to be much more responsive to working, and we're able to bring those savings yeah. to the consumers and maybe never charge them. I but we don't make we haven't even made that decision today. Right. right. Well, I mean, I hope as a consumer that the banks do come on board because the first time I was watching the presentation, I mean, that was the thing in the back of my mind is I was like, you know, this solves problems, but still, I don't want to take care of it. Right. I still don't want to have to take care of it. You're making it a step easier. That's right. But unless you get the banks on board, it's not as easy. It's not going to really solve the problem. That's right. So okay. imagine, imagine if the the anti-spam. Do you want to say something? I just want to say that our goal is to take the hassle out of bad charges, mm -hmm. and that's it. So you won't have to care about it. And just about, just about the, the, the previous question about the business model, it's important to note that we're already investigating um, very innovative business models to try to monetize the data that we are collecting and structuring on the back end. Mm -hmm. And if we talked about this uh, reliability score badge that we'll put on e-commerce websites, well, this is um, this kind of an, uh, a play that we want to get at we will be able to have this premium feed mm -hmm. to the merchants for them to get an alert mm -hmm. before the bank when there is a bad charge that someone is complaining yeah. for a specific merchant. And that's we will, that, that is something that we may want to charge for so that merchant will pay us to get this information before the bank, before they actually you know, punish them with the, with the fees. And most importantly, solve the c consumer's problem. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I think one thing that struck me both about, about you guys and Get Around, I think more than, um, I'd say most of the companies I've seen pitch in the history of this competition, the two of you have really thought through all of these business ramifications. The fact that you've thought sort of so far down the line on yeah. these things, yeah. you know, I, I, think is, I think is really impressive, particularly for a startup that's demoing. Yeah. How long have you guys been working on this? So it's been, uh, it's been only about a year. And we've been coding. Like we are, we're a team of 12. And besides myself, we're all data scientists, mathematicians, security what do you bring? people. I don't know. Just pissing off Arrington? Yeah. <laughs> so, Doing my best. So what was the deal with that? You couldn't just stop talking. You couldn't just stop talking. I guess I should have, you know, <laughs> dated better, as Arrington said. You know what I mean? But that was fun. That was fun. If that you lose, fun. it'll be because you pissed him off. Yeah, but we had Arrington? fun, and that's the most important part, isn't it? <laughs> it's Are you rarely. sure it's not because I pissed off uh, Tim with the AOL uh, example? <laughs> oh, no, no. We're so, like, vitriolically, <laughs> like, in support of of looking like we are independent, that like we would probably eradicate their business model <laughs> ourselves just to prove <laughs> that we weren't in their pocket. No, that's actually one of my favorite things about you guys is that if you win, you might actually kill TechCrunch because there will be no oh AOL revenues <laughs> to support our There's business. There's a tweet. <laughs> I think our chances of winning just went down pretty significantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what has happened since Monday. Um, I don't know yeah. if you guys saw this, but while you were on stage, Philip Kaplan tweeted um, Blippi, yeah. that he was going to do it, and then he tweeted like 10 minutes later, bucks. you saved him 30 bucks. Yeah, and we've had those have been the most amazing tweets. So we've had a bunch of those where people are like, I just saved 80 dollars, I saved 40 dollars, whatever it is. What was On the 1600 dollar? Six thousand dollars. What was the six thousand dollar? I can't one? say who it was. A very wealthy no, individual. No, not who it was, but what was the charge? It was some fraudulent charge that. It was it, fraud. Then. It was fraud. It was actual fraud. Yeah. And we have a policy. We can't we tell you the name. Yeah. yeah, we don't disclose that. But, um, <coughs> it was, and the guy was just like, oh, okay. And it wasn't, same thing. He didn't right away call up his bank and cancel it. He was like, oh, okay, I have $6,000 fraud on my card. Unbelievable. People are so lazy. The thing is, you could charge 50% if you took care of it. True. You could charge now, me, so, so much if you did that extra so look, stuff. When we first started the company, it was the idea. It was like, mm -hmm. let's do it like an accountant, okay? Whatever we save you, we'll take a percentage. Mm -hmm. That sounds great as a soundbite for a competition. Operationally, when you actually run a business, no, I get it. it's much more messy. I think you messy. should do both. I think you should do a small fee, and then if they want to solve it themselves, they pay a small fee. If you get to the point where you can take care of it for them, or if it helps you get there faster, take 50%. Because people would give you 50% to take care of it for them. How about I we, would. we just give it away free and have the banks figure out <laughs> that it's their responsibility to subsidize this? How about that? Clean and if simple. the banks can do it, if the banks will do it. I don't trust banks, though. I think they're jerks. <laughs> All right, um, so tell us what else has happened since Monday. You said you had 10,000 cards registered, 20% yeah. of them had yeah, a bad that's, charge. That's the most amazing that's stat. We, way beyond our expectations because if you think about it, this is a system that inherently gets smarter and better mm -hmm. with every new user and over time. So to start with, you know, most people think the classic chicken and egg problem of crowdsourcing, mm -hmm. we were able to circumvent that by simply getting all that knowledge that's already out on the web. 
people are tweeting, people are complaining on complaint mm -hmm. boards and forums. We were able to pull that in and already have actionable data. Mm -hmm. That's been the most exciting thing so far. All right, so let's see if you have the guts to answer the question that the uh -oh. Duet guy did not. <laughs> if Let's assume you were disqualified from the competition for yeah. some reason because AOL says you're going to kill our revenue in yeah. your case. Yeah, I got a call from Tim. Which of the, four, which of the five remaining companies should win? Get around? Yeah, definitely. They're the yeah. most tech crunchy. It's that easy. Yeah. You just yeah. answer the question, Dua. It's that easy. Yeah. Get around. I Why? Think, I think they're the most tech crunchy. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they're excited. Do you know what I mean? They are the most tech crunchy. If people are actually willing to rent out their car to people, which I'm personally not, but I'm assuming there are, yeah. um, then I think it's a, a very interesting business, and I wish them all the best of luck. Okay, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank and you. good luck. And up next, we are going to talk to Invoice ASAP, <laughs> who's already hitting the booze, my kind right. of man. Thank you. And <laughs> thank Rosazzo. you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. So, okay. So, uh, Invoice ASAP, for those of you who don't know, I've, I've talked to, yep, yep, they're the mobile invoice company.